Hi, I'm Johnny. I'm a lecturer here at UCL. Uh, I teach maths. Uh, and I'm going to tell you today um, that there are many different kinds of infinity. Actually, there are infinitely many, but today I'm just going to produce for you two kinds of infinity. So, in order to understand that statement, we really need to understand something about numbers and about counting. And we need to think quite hard about what it means to count objects. So, suppose I'm counting happy faces. Here's one, two, three. And if I was counting apples, I would be using the same numbers to count these things. One, two, three, four, etc. So when we count, what we're doing is we're labeling objects with a, a fixed standard set of things, namely whole numbers. So then you might ask, can I count the whole numbers? Because there are actually infinitely many of them. But the answer is yes, you can, because you just count each number as itself. So one is the first number, two is the second number, three is the third number, and so on. So I'm allowing you to use infinitely many labels to count infinitely many things. So that's OK. OK, but we know there are numbers that are not whole numbers. There are fractions, for example. So you know, we have numbers like a half, or 9 twelfths, or 41 20 seconds. And we can count these too. So let me show you how. Let's try and do it a very naive way first. We'll do maybe 1, which is 1 over 1, a half, which is 1 over 2, a third, a quarter, and so on. But then we've used up all of our numbers, right? We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, and we haven't got numbers like 2 thirds. So how are we going to how are we going to compensate for this? So I'm going to write all of the rational, all of the fractional numbers on the board. So um, here's 1 a half, a third, a quarter, etc. And then two, two halves, two thirds, two quarters, etc. And then three, three halves. You get the idea? I'm just writing them on the first row. I'm using one in the numerator and in the, in the second column, I'm using two in the denominator, etc. Okay, so I'm going to count these numbers as follows. This is going to be the first one. The second one, the third one, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. And I'm working down in diagonals. And if I do it like this, I'm going to count all of those numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc. So we can actually count all the fractions. But there are numbers that maybe aren't fractions, and we want to count those too. Numbers like pi, which is 3.1415 something. Um, we, want to, we want to count numbers that have decimal expansions. So we call numbers like pi real numbers because they're the numbers we really, really care about. These are numbers that have decimal expansions. And I want to prove to you that we cannot count all numbers with decimal expansions. We cannot count all real numbers. So suppose we could. Suppose we could, and suppose we could make a list. Here's the first number, maybe it's pi. Um, and here's the second number, maybe it's zero. And the third number is maybe 1.70342, I don't know, some big long number. And you could continue and count all of the real numbers. Well, I'm going to give you a number which is not on this list, which means you missed one out. So to do that, I'm going to look at the first digit of the first number, and it's a 1. And I'm going to apply the following algorithm. If that number is a 3, I'm going to change it into a 2. And if it's anything else, I'm going to change it into a 3. Well, in this case, it's a 1. That's anything else, so it's going to be a 3. And then I'm going to look at the second number, and I'm going to look at the second digit. That's a 0. So I'm going to write a 3. Look at the third number. Look at the third digit. That's a 3. So I'm going to change it into a 2. And I'm going to continue in this way. And I'm going to end up with a number that looks something like this. Lots of 2s and lots of 3s. And I claim this is not on my list. Because in particular, it's not the first number, because it disagrees with the first digit. It's not the second number, because it disagrees with the second digit, etc. It's not the nth number because it disagrees at the nth digit. So we've produced a number that wasn't on our list, but this list was supposed to be every single real number. So this means that 
There are more real numbers than there are whole numbers. But we know there are infinitely many whole numbers you can keep counting forever. So there are different kinds of infinity. Some are bigger than others. So this is maybe seems a little abstract and, and useless, but actually it's useful because we can now prove that there exist numbers that are not fractions. If all real numbers were fractions, we could take this list and write it out. And then uh, 0 0.500, 0, 0, and then 2.000, 0, 0, 0, etc. And we can apply the algorithm I just explained and produce some number that looks like this. And this will not occur on this list. This is a list of all fractions. Therefore, this is not a fraction. So we've produced a real number which is not a fraction. So this kind of argument is useful for producing examples that disobey our intuition or, or that counteract our intuition. Uh, it's called Cantor's diagonal argument because we're proceeding down the diagonal and making our final number disagree along the diagonal. So there you go, that's Cantor's diagonal argument. That explains why there are two kinds of infinity. Actually, there are infinitely many kinds of infinity, but I'll uh, leave you to go and think about that for yourselves. Thank you for watching.